Welcome to our SIG cluster uh, in, uh, life cycle introduction section. Uh, before we begin, uh, let me introduce myself and uh, my colleagues, my co-speakers. I'm Alexander Konevsky. I work in Intel Open Source Technology Center as a cloud architect. We are contributing to Kubernetes in multiple areas like signal, resource management, and so on. But SIG cluster lifecycle is something what I personally like and, and contribute the most. Uh, this is sorry. This is Dishi from China, and I've been with Kubernetes for more than two years. And I am top fifty code contributor to the Kubernetes main repo. Uh, now I'm working at Ant Financial as a software developer. And Dishi DX is my Slack ID, also my GitHub handler. So if you got any questions, feel free to ping me on Slack or send me on GitHub. Hi, from myself as well. I'm Lucas Chastrom. I'm a co-lead of the SIG. We have also Robert Bailey from Google and Tim St. Clair from Heptio, or, well, now VMware. Uh, I'm a, also a CN CNSF ambassador and have done the certified Kubernetes administrator thing. Um, well, normally I'm, or I just graduated from high school. Now I'm in military service, but when I'm done with that, I'll go to uni, and also I'm doing contracting for WeWorks on these Kubeadm things. So I'm really happy that I get to do that. Looks like it's my both Slack and GitHub ID. So ping me there if you have something. Yeah, and we are really lucky what we got Lucas to the stage today because uh, we didn't really plan what he will be here uh, in KubeCon China, and just like last week uh, we realized what he will be here and. Really great what our, uh, one of our SIG leads is actually here. So, uh, SIG cluster life cycle. What we are trying to do. Like our mission is to simplify creation, configuration, uh, upgrading, downgrade, tear down the clusters. And what it means in reality. In reality, it means creation of the tools and documentation. How we do, how do, we, how we do, we do it. And this can be split practically into six big buckets. Like, the well, first bucket is how we create the uh, control plane itself. It means we are, uh, we are developing a tool called KubeADM, which helps you to bootstrap a cluster, uh, configure the most mandatory parts of it, and then, uh, like, afterwards, it, uh, you can build on top of it. The second part is configuration management, means how I fine-tune my cluster. And for that, um, uh, our SIG is driving the creation and actually implementation of component configs. Uh, if you haven't heard the talk what Lucas was doing yesterday, I would recommend you to actually look at it uh, in the recording. It's re really informative and you can get the details how it's implemented. The fourth bucket is how we actually create the machine, so how we're managing the machines. It's also one of the recent sub-projects of a SIG cluster lifecycle called Cluster API. Uh, it allows you to have a declarative way how to, uh, how to bring the machines to the cluster and how to define the cluster itself. The, fifth, oh, sorry, the fourth bucket is add-on management. Again, KubeADM installs the most simple things, well, well need, what you need for certification. The more, many tools what we have as part of uh, C-Cluster lifecycle sub-projects, we have different means to install additional components like dashboard, uh, hipster, and anything else. Most of those tools is actually opinionated how to do that. And um, sooner or later, we need to actually come up with some common proposal uh, to just uh, have more or less similar experience across the portfolio of the tools. Currently, we are looking at the project called Cluster Bundle. It was created by Google Kubernetes team. Uh, it's not official Google project, but um, our C Cluster Lifecycle sees is uh, as a good example how we can uh, how we can leverage it for uh, add-on management. And, and this is to clarify, this is still a 
this is still a proposal. Yes, that's good. Uh, that's good. So we have no practical implementation of this yet. So if you're interested in how to do add-on management more generically and unify these kinds of, well, now we have a lot of fragmentation, uh, fragmented tools that do this. Uh, if we can unify these, uh, come and get and work with us on this proposal. So the fifth part is one of the hardest bits in Kubernetes is actually how we run the ETCD. It's cornerstone uh, for the whole Kubernetes because like all information about your cluster, all information about your workloads is stored there. And again, many tools in our portfolio had experienced uh, how, how to deploy it. So QVDM deployed in one way, COPS was deploying it another way, uh, COPS prayed a third way, and so on and so on. So now we have a proposal actually to create a new tool which will allow you to, uh, to deploy the ETCD clusters, single node, multi-node, uh, handle all the maintenance tasks like upgrading, downgrading, restore, backups, and so on. New thing, uh, no code yet, but going to be. And the last part is actually all the other sub-projects what we have. Some of those sub-projects is uh, quite alive and actively developed. Some of them are dying because well, no need anymore or being obsoleted by something newer or more interesting. And some, uh, some projects are actually coming up uh, because of development of cluster APIs, like many of uh, providers for, for different cloud solutions. And actual list is changing from time to time. So don't, don't look at this at granted. Uh, on our information on uh, SIG, we have a list of actual projects and uh, actual locations where, uh, where we are located. Yeah, and you can find the information about any SIG and this SIG as well in the Kubernetes community repo. Then there's a documentation on who are the SIG leads, where are we meeting, where are all the Google Docs, uh, meeting notes, uh, where on Zoom can you join, what times, stuff like that, and all these what the sub-projects. An important thing to note about etcd Adam here as well is a non-goal is to deploy a normal like application etcd cluster. So say you're running a website and have a Go backend that needs some data storage, and you connect your etcd cluster, then you should use the etcd operator. But in for this specific task of backing the Kubernetes API server, we're looking to, for more unification in uh, the ecosystem, and hence proposing this etcd admin. Yeah, so practically building block for all our tools what we are developing. So uh, I mentioned in previous couple of slides with cluster API, so let's talk one minute about it. So what, what, what is cluster API? It's a declarative way uh, to define your cluster. So it, it will be same, uh, like if you're familiar with Kubernetes, it will be the same kind of like YAML file, which has kind uh, cluster machine, machine set, or the machine deployment, which describes the entities inside your cluster. So the cluster object will contain your configuration, including like the bits related to your uh, provider, like the global configuration. Machine describes uh, one physical or virtual machine which runs kubelet. So when it fully bootstrapped, it will become as your node cluster or as, as a cluster node object. But while it's still provisioned, it's handled as a machine. And machine set, machine deployments is to draw the analogies to the, like normal Kubernetes world, if machine is your port, so machine set is your like replica set, like set of equal, mach uh, uh, equal machines, and machine deployment is kind of like normal deployment, which able to handle the common logic for upgrading and downgrading or scaling the machines. And to user, how it will be visible? Like you have. Uh, practically two common line utilities. One is uh, cluster CTL. It will help you to create the CRDs for, for these objects. Um, it will be able to bootstrap the controllers like machine controller and um, um, 
cluster controller within your cluster, but afterwards you are working with all those objects like using normal uh, kubectl command. So like kubectl create me machine or create machine deployment. So the way how those machine controllers, cluster controllers, it will be working, it's again like similar, similar to everything else uh, working in Kubernetes. It absorbs the current state, it absorbs what kind of configuration you want to get it, and then does the, uh, all the needed things to actually bring to the cluster to the desired state. Uh, the common logic is existing for machine sets, for machine deployments. But how to bring individual machine, it, it is a pluggable interface, and each provider, each solution, like would it be like for some public cloud, private cloud, or some bare metal solution, we need to create a, a provider which actually will be doing this machine allocation and provisioning for it. We currently have multiple set of uh, community and company maintained providers. This list is growing and I see, I hope I see it growing. Um, and um, why at all we are trying to create this cluster APIs? It's, it allows us to build uh, well, first of all, unify and then build more tools on how to manage the cluster. Would it be like after scaling or like upgrades or any other maintenance works, what we need to do. Yeah, and it's also really interesting. Uh, I saw other talks here about Chinese deployments of Kubernetes and they used really the same semantics. Uh, that this is about, so we're looking forward to also including those to to this and come and collaborate with us uh, on the cluster API, so we can get this kind of Kubernetes official spec uh, that that is maintained by the community. Okay, so how many of you here have been using Kubernetes? Okay, that's cool. Uh, KubeNM has a very dedicated scope, as you might know. Um, here we first, the, the most bottom layer is like the actual infrastructure. It can be bare metal, it can be some cloud, it can be a Raspberry Pi, it can be anything. Um, then you provision in some way, like physical machines, you have them on your desk, or you create VMs in the cloud. Um, and then you want to install Kubernetes. So KubeNM has a scope of running locally on each node or master. It doesn't see the whole cluster. It doesn't like uh, configure everything. It does just exactly the amount of things that is needed for a conformant Kubernetes cluster. So if you've heard of the CNCF Kubernetes certification program. That is basically the baseline of every Kubernetes cluster. You know what to expect. And KubeRM satisfied this, this spec, but doesn't do anything more because then you start, then it starts to get a lot more opinionated, uh, which is left for other tools like the cluster API. So, a cluster API implementation. So here we see that KubeNM is, is the middle layer, the toolbox that you, you can use to create clusters. So here um, we can see that the, there's a cluster API spec that is developed by the community, uh, but then you create an actual implementation. I could create my own uh, Raspberry Pi stack cluster API implementation that boots up my Raspberry Pi on, on the desk. Um, and that would then provision infrastructure and the machines. Local, locally on every machine, KubeNM is executing, either using init or join. So that's good, then we have Kubernetes. Then cluster API, which is a controller that's running in the cluster, uh, can also, if, if it wants or if the cloud provider then likes uh, install some add-ons, it can connect to load balancers, maybe do monitoring, logging, whatnot. So this kind of 
three th these layers uh, are are really what how we can separate and cluster API is now the the like um, is is actually provisioning the layer one QBDM or oh, cluster API is the spec of layer one um, but it's running as an add-on layer three QBDM is our community toolbox for the, in this case layer two and then cloud provider I don't know if you've been inter uh, following the cloud provider refactoring group the uh, now say cl cloud provider uh, but that's essentially about creating uh, now cloud providers are built into Kubernetes and it's just a very small set like seven or something these are refactored and put as add-ons instead so they run on top of Kubernetes so then we have a clean abstraction for each and every one tool and you might wonder what is the difference between QBDM or COPS, GKE, AKS, whatever, like these hosted Kubernetes solutions or KubeSpray, similar. That is that QBDM only sees the local master or node and Kubernetes. So it manipulates local files on disk as well as the Kubernetes API, but nothing more. COPS or KubeSpray or a hosted provider solution cares about all the machines, all the infrastructure, all the bootstrapping processes, all the add-ons, load balances, monitor, everything. So it has a more global scope. So KubeBedim is, is instead a community tool to create clusters that you can use in your whole full provider solutions. So we want to create a best practice cluster. So for every minor version, things change. There are new security features. We have old features that get deprecated. We have new parameters and, and like things to take into account when managing the cluster. Uh, and we, we do that and we are on top of the, the new things that are happening and implementing them to have the best cluster that you can have. Uh, that you can bootstrap locally. Uh, we try to make it simple. Kubernetes init is all that you need in order to bootstrap a master. Kubernetes join together with a token is what you need to join the next node. Uh, but Kubernetes, as said, scope is limited. It's intended to be a building block, not this full solution, in order to fit in to, into all the full solutions we have. And for example, Installing a CNI network is out of scope. There are a lot of CNIs in interface. That means there's a lot of different implementations. You're free to choose the implementation you want by using kubectl apply after kubedm init. And then we also have a composable architecture that we'll talk about more later in the deep dive. Uh, we have a deep dive session later today. So what we've done recently is better AJ support. People ask about that a lot. How can we do multiple masters? How can we make it resilient to the control plane failing on one machine? So that we have such a feature in experimental. Again, QBedim doesn't do everything for you, but it simplifies the flow uh, significantly. So for example, if you do use kubedm aj, you should still set up your external load balancer or you set up DNS or whatever, because that is really dependent on your environment. We can't say you have to use Envoy for load balancing, nothing else in the world works, for example. Instead, you're free to choose. The same at setting up etcd is going to be an external aj etcd is going to be done with etcd add-in. Etc. Etc. But kubedm does what it's good at. Um, Core DNS replaced kubedns as the default DNS provider in the recent versions. That is really nice to see. Uh, congrats on the Core DNS team for making that possible. Uh, then in the deep dive, we we can also talk a bit more about component config, how that works. Um, or as said, you can watch the recording from my talk yesterday. Um, but basically, it's all about 
having the same uniform base configuration for all kubelets. So if you set, I want a specific service subnet, then the kubelets will actually take that into account. So you don't have to first go and modify every node in your cluster to use this new subnet. Mm, and then stabilizing and improving the structure of kubenm configuration file. kubenm support very advanced configuration and that can't fit in on the command line as flags. So we support a component config configuration file. And generally many improvements. The big, I don't know, news, but uh, the big goal is to go stable or production ready, you might call it, or generally available uh, in the next release, which is coming in about a month, a bit more. And um, that's that's really good. We now have every every feature we're using is better or higher. So we can say that QBM as a whole is production ready. The Alpha Cluster API release is coming also this, this winter, we hope. And prototype implementations are already there. So it's up to those providers to say how mature is my, my implementation of this spec. And what's very important to note is that most implementation are using, of the cluster API are using QBedM for bootstrapping. So let's say we created this CRD in the cluster. I want a new node. Uh, you say that using kubectl create machine uh, and uh, some kind of config on how much CPU you want and stuff. Uh, then when that machine is provisioned somewhere and is booting up, on, on the bootstrapping process there, it's actually using kubedm join to get it into the cluster. So there we see that we, we can get this full flow and use the tools we are building that are have defined scopes on what they should do. Cool. So just as Alex just mentioned, we have several sub products in Novsig, but today I'm just going to name a few of them. The first one will be COPS. Has anybody ever used COPS? Raise your hands. Wow, quite a few. So actually COPS comes from the, the name of COPS comes from Kubernetes operations. So what, what COPS is trying to do is try to help you build a, a production ready Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. So, so COPS will, will, will try to help you build a, a production ready a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. Uh, that means you need to uh, cloud environment, environment. Currently, we have COPS uh, support AWS in, in official support and have GCE in beta support and we have DigitalOcean and OpenStack in alpha support. In recent re release in 1.10, we have brought several new uh, bug fix and the stab stabilization fix to the new release. And uh, uh, this is why we to try to keep to make COPS a standard uh, uh, installer for the cloud environment. And in the next release, we are going to make a COPS support a new or uh, Kubernetes release. Currently, we are ca we are kind of lagging a bit high, so uh, we need to support 1.11 and 1.12 in the next release. So the next one is COPS, it's Kubistray. Actually, uh, to be short, Kubistray is a kind of unstable black box trying to help you build uh, uh, the Kubernetes cluster using scripts. So uh, uh, the scripts, the black box in the Kubistray is composable. That means you can try to uh, choose your favorite network plugins when bootstrapping the cluster. And in the recent release, we try to uh, browse some new features Example, I have co contributed several ARM patches to uh, make it portable to uh, ARM architect architecture. And we have uh, some NVIDIA GPU support, uh, which is still experimental currently. And uh, we have uh, add some CIO as the default, default content engine instead of current Docker. And in the next release, we are going to switch into KubeDM because QBDM is considered the GA in the following release, maybe the 1.13, right? 
And uh, what we are going to do is trying to make the CR working well in the whole community. I will try to submit a pull request to the community. And currently, uh, we are not in Kubistray as a default uh, CR system. So we are trying to integrate Kubistray into our uh, Kubernetes CR system So in the future. So we will see. And the last one is Minikube. Actually, Minikube is the first uh, installer that I have ever used when I get started with Kubernetes. But the interesting part is Minikube is not working very well in China because of the connect network connectivity. I mean, the, the firewall, you know, yeah. Uh, what what Minikube will try to do is help you build a local cluster in your laptop. It will try to bootstrap a virtual machine and try to install all the dependencies into the virtual machine. So, and in the really recent release, you zero point thirty, we have tried to uh, support the latest Kubernetes release, for example, one point eleven and one point twelve, and uh, we have already switching to use kubeadm as uh, the default installer to to help you bootstrap the whole cluster. So, and also we have GPU supported in the latest release. Uh, for the coming release, we are going to uh, make it more stable. Finally, we can reach the, the, the eventually release 1.0. 1, 1 yeah, and uh, some quick notes about where we're going next year. And we hope you follow us in this journey. Uh, I said kubeadm to general availability, uh, hopefully already this winter. And then the cluster API spec is right now in alpha. We want to make the spec stable and go to beta next year. And also make the pro implementations of this uh, beta or higher. Then as D just said, uh, GA release for Minikube, the first stable one, uh, would be really nice to get done. Uh, the component configs, uh, component config spe uh, specifications for the Kubernetes components uh, is right now for all but the kubelet, it's in alpha. So better or higher there as well. And you, the new proposals we have on etcd Adam and the cluster bundles, aka add-ons. Uh, we want to create some initial implementations of these to see how they're working. But also our SIG is doing documentation and maintenance. So we actually, I went to the doc sprint uh, this Tuesday uh, in the contributor summit, and there we talked about how we can improve our Chinese docs for for this SIG. Uh, for example, kubeadm, we really want to get kubeadm translations in as soon as possible. And we've now started collaborating on that in Chinese. So also highly better docs on highly available clusters in, in Kubernetes in general, explain the concepts, stuff like that, how you can, what kind of cluster deployment patterns you can use, um, but also, maintenance stuff, removing old projects that are, aren't relevant anymore because we have this new thing that replaces it. Um, and for example, kubeup and Cube Anywhere are such projects. Um, so we, we also do cleanup from time to time. So this is the most important part of our intro part. I would like to invite all of you to join our SIG to help make it better. And uh, actually, don't feel intimidated to make your own contributions. Uh, even a small change can make a big difference, right? So don't hesitate to make your contributions. If you feel uncomfortable when using could be them, so try to make it better. That's what we are waiting for, all of you. We have all, we have several links here to to guide you how to make your own contributions and the docs here. Uh, we have guest stack doc to help you to uh, help you get warm about our kubeadm. So, and I was wondering whether we should have another office hour for China users because the 
the office overflow currently is not very friendly to Chinese users. So if you are interested in our SIG, so please contact me and I will try to help organize a Chinese office hour, right? Yeah. Right, like uh, right now we don't have enough people to make that happen, but if we get a critical amount, we definitely should do it. And we have several talks about the SIG, so if you're interested, so please come come and stop by to have a talk with us. And uh, yesterday Lucas have given us a component config uh, 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 session about uh, how to make your, take your cluster on the next level. And uh, in the next few hours, Luke, Alex and I will try to give another deep dive on our SIG. So if you're interested in QBLM, so try to uh, come to see our talk. And uh, if you want to know about more about the cluster API, so uh, you can try to recap to see the recaps of just listen uh, me phone's session to, uh, this afternoon. And uh, in the next in the next KubeCon in Seattle, I will try to uh, have another session about managing your Amazon with operators. So if you are interested, so go go to Seattle to have us uh, to do say. So yeah, so why not join us? So we want to make a whole community uh, well. So uh, these are our meeting notes, and we have also our Slack Slack channels. If you are interested, just uh, join the Slack channels uh, in the community community community. And uh, we have several uh, in this, uh, guest study docs about the setting the guide of the design doc. If you are interested, so. That's all for today. Thanks for your coming. And if you if you have got any questions, feel free to talk to us offline. Yep. And please join our deep dive session if you are interested in the uh, this, <laughs> and then, Yeah, right. So if you I would like to invite all of you to join our deep dive part. Thank you.